Hey right bags, it's Jay. Today I'm going over the 28 fusion pals that you can get. These are guaranteed pals that if you mix the right parents and breed them, you will always get exactly the same pal. You may have noticed that you are kind of getting mixed results sometimes with some of the pals that you're trying to breed. That's because there are over 18,000 different combinations, but these fusion pals are guaranteed to always give you the same creature. Sean P is a data miner that has worked on a bunch of stuff to do with Grounded and as I covered Grounded a lot, he's helped me in the past with a bunch of stuff. He gave me a DM to say that his basic calculator is up on Reddit, so if you really want to learn more about breeding and how to get exactly what type of pals or the best chance to get pals, go and check it out. There is percentage chance of getting a pal depending on what creature you put in and what power level it is. But these fusion pals, it doesn't matter what level they are, it's all just about what parents they are. So I'm gonna give you all 28. They're super rare, some of these. Most of them are mini bosses or overworld bosses too. I'm not showing off all their abilities in this video. That will be coming in separate videos where I take a look at like the best mounts, the best flyers, the best bosses. But of course, I will go over the differences between the normal pals and their sub variants. Some are definitely worth trying to get, some maybe not so much. Some of these creatures you will find out in the world and you can go ahead and tame them and obviously bring them home that way. But if you try breeding them, there's no guaranteed chance you'll actually get more of the same. And of course you can maybe buy some of these or get lucky and hatch them from eggs you find, but this is the breed method. And at the very end, I am gonna talk about five sets of parents that will always guarantee to give you creatures as these are quite special ones. I worked super hard on this video, it's taken me days, so please leave a like, make sure to subscribe for more power guides and let's go. For a Dino Blossom Lux, you'll obviously need a Dino Blossom and you'll need a Rayhound. Rayhounds are found all the way to the northeast. And Dino Blossoms can be found in multiple places. So let's pick this one up. Large Electric Egg and Dino Blossom Lux was born. In the wild, these can be found in the northeast. Dino Blossoms are obviously good at planting. The Lux version though, they have lightning abilities. So they'll be able to power up any power generators as well as obviously do lightning attacks. And yes, you can ride both of these. If you want a Robin Quill Terror, you actually have to breed it with a Fuddler. Large Verdant Egg and Robin Quill Terror was born. You can of course find Robin Quill Terror all the way to the northeast again. So you actually lose the planting ability with the Robin Quill Terror, but you do gain Earth Attacks. If you want an Incineram Knocked, again, you can go all the way over to the island here and the Sanctuary, or you can breed an Incineram with a Moraith. He's only spawned at knife time in the deep north. Well, meant to anyway. Incineroon Knot was born. Incineroon Knot does lose its heating abilities, so no using it for any of your furnace work. As far as I can tell, they may be a little bit stronger. And although they don't actually have a flame attached as their element, they do still do pretty much all flame damage. It's so maybe not worth your time, just stick with a normal Incineroon. If you want the ice variant of King Packer, you're going to need to mix one with a Rindrix. So the King Pack could be found all the way over to the west, or you could try the boss variant version as well. And the Rindrix, as you might expect, is all the way to the north. There you go, Ice King Packer. The regular King Packer is neutral, but obviously the ice is ice powered. In fact, you get ice cooling of level three with this guy. It's really useful for having it at base to call all your call boxes. If you want a Gobfin Ignis, you have to put a Gobfin in with a Ruby. Here's where Gobfins are, and you find Rubies there as well. Goblin Ignis was born. And pretty obvious, but the regular Gobfin is obviously water based. The Ignis version is going to have flame abilities. Curiously, both of them will come with ice powers as well. So you'll lose two water in with the Gobfin and gain two heat in. If you want an Ozark, you're going to need a Grisbolt and a Relaxosaurus. Relaxosaurus you'll find to the west, and Grisbolt at the reservation to the south. Ozark was born. So the Ozark is a pretty powerful foe. It's one of the boss fight tames that you'll come across. And yeah, it's going to have obviously dragon power and lightning damage. You gain more water power drops when using this to fight, but there's no saddle for it. Again, he's all the way to the northeast. Chris Jolthog, anyone? Let's go. Jolt hogs are found to the west of the Plateau of Beginnings. Penguins spawn in various different locations and you're simply swapping over lightning damage for ice. So again, you'll get cooling ability, but you won't have power generator ability anymore. 
Want a crisp male? Then again, just a regular male and a pengulet will get you that. Males obviously spawn in caves. Pengulets spawn in various different locations. Actually comes with one calling, both for farm animals, and they can both go ahead and still just dig for gold when you put them inside a ranch. On the Lux version of a Masunda, you're gonna to have to breed a Masunda with a Grisbolt. Now Grisbolts only really spawn here on the first sanctuary towards the south. The Masunda spawns in the north. Masunda Lux, lightning damage instead of grass. You lose the planting ability with this guy, but obviously you will gain two lightning. And that means power and generate is better. If you want an Elk Deer Terror, you can actually just go to the sanctuary and pick them up. If you want to breed them, then it's with an Elk Deer and you need a Hangu. So these can be found here. And again, all the way in the sanctuary, all the way to the northeast. The regular Elk Deer is obviously neutral, but the Elk Deer Terror will have Earth abilities. No difference in their job tasks. And both can be ridden with a saddle doing the same job. These Bunk Ignis, I just literally got that from an egg after going around the desert environment for the first time. But obviously you can find plenty of them at night time as well. If you want to breed one, then you need a Lee's Punk. Again, all the way to the north and again to the desert area here. If you can maybe strong enough, you can maybe tame them if they raid you. But they're usually pretty high level and quite hard to capture. Anyway, you need to breed a Lee's Punk with a Flambelle which you'll find in the lava zone and this little band here. As Pug Ignis has got one fire as its job, you will lose some of your dark abilities. If you want a Bron Cherry Aqua, you need to bring a Bron Cherry. You can find them here with a Thwack. It's a pretty easy to spot all around. The regular Bron Cherry is free gardening. The Bron Cherry Aqua, free water. So if you can get both of these, that's pretty much you sorted for a lot of your gardening. It does say the Bron Cherry's habitat is unknown, so I'm guessing it might be a special one of mini bosses, or maybe you do find them in some caves, but they're quite large creatures. Here in Knot, obviously, will be a scorched egg. They're in the wild all the way over in the lava zone, obviously, just like the Pyrins, but at night time. You will need a Catrice as well, obviously, and these can be found at night time all around, just slightly to the north. If you just want to get them naturally, they do spawn a lot more than just the regular Pyrins as well. You can see all the way over. And of course they'll have the added benefit of having dark powers. A Doomons and a Surfent will give you a Terra Surfent, which can actually go fast across some of the sand dunes. And Surfent Terra was born. And again, if you want him on his own, you'll find it all the way to the northeast. Surfents only actually spawn in certain locations, well, meant to anyway. If you actually look for them at night time, you can also find them to the north as well as to the west. If you want the ice variant of a Hangu, then you're going to need to get a Sui and obviously a Hangu. And for the Suis, they normally guard in the sweeper, so maybe a bit more challenging to get hold of. You can find them to the small cold mountain towards the north or to this slightly northwest section. And there's a tiny, tiny little area that you might be able to find them all the way over to the west southwest. There you go, Hangyu Christ was born. The Hangyu Christ has the same work abilities, but it will come with one extra calling. Otherwise, you can find plenty of Hangyu Christs all the way up to the north. To get the Relaxosaurus Lux, you're going to need to spark it very close to the west hand side if you've spawned in the uh, plateaus of beginnings, and then slightly to the north west. And the Relaxosaurus is pretty close by as well, just to the west hand side. And yes, obviously the Relaxosaurus gains electric, but you actually get three plus for charging power generators compared to only having two water for the regular Relaxosaurus. Both will still carry on having dragon. You might be lucky to find a Relaxosaurus in a cave, but I do believe it is one of the small little mini boss fights that you can find. If you want to get hold of an Ephrodan Aqua, these are actually special ones, I'm guessing. Again, it might be a mini boss or inside caves. Ephrodans you can find all the way to the south in the conservatory. Again, unless you've got it as a boss fight, which it is available. And you will need to do it with a serpent. So again, to the west and to the north. But only at night time to the north. You gain free water in as a job with the aqua version. So pretty powerful. The regular Ephrodan does have fire abilities, I do believe. Obviously with the dragon. And then you gain extra water abilities with the Wackle version. Van Rim Christ is a Van Rim and a Foxicle. You just swap out your fire damage for ice damage. But again, the Christ version does offer two ice damage 
compared to only one fire damage for the regular Van Wim. Van Wim's all in the lava and slightly just to the west. The Fog's Court is pretty tough, with only this one little location across the small snowy mountains towards the north. Otherwise, if you go at night time towards the north, a big area of snow, you'll find plenty of the Van Rim Chris there. With the Van Rim Chris, you will lose, obviously, your heating ability, but you will gain two frost cooling. Both of them will carry on having dark powers. If you want to get the ice version of the Mamrist, you're going to need to get a Mamrist and a Wumpo. So Mamrist are in lots of places. They'll be pretty much the starting point at the plateau beginnings, and you can find them all over. In fact, anywhere there's a spawn point when you've died, that's where you usually find one. There used to be pairs of two, but it looks like they removed them and just have one now. And then Wumpos are strictly ice creatures, so you are going to have to go all the way up to the north. Otherwise, again, go all the way up to the north and you find plenty of the Mamarest Chris yourself. Obviously, the regular Mamarest is good for gardening, and then the ice version is going to give you two ice job as well. So if you go all the way to the north, you will find the Frost Lion, and obviously this is going to help us get the Frost Lion knocked. Incredibly, that will give you the Suzuka Aqua, which again isn't showing up on the map anywhere. So unless it's in the cave, that might be the only way to get it, unless it's an overworld boss. And obviously it just swaps so over fire you run and hide behind these pillars. So if you want to get hold of a Frost Lion knocked, you're obviously going to need a Frost Lion, and you actually make this with a Helsifar. It's a lot smaller than the boss counterpart, but you get the idea. The Frost Lion is a overworld boss. You will find it all the way over to the north in the cold. As far as I know, that might be it, unless there are some caves that it might be in. But this is the alpha version. And then you've got the Noct version, which instead of being ice, which also helps you convert your attacks to ice, will convert to dark. And again, I can't find any of these anywhere, so I presume they're in caves. Frostline is one of the last saddles that you can unlock, so you know you're dealing with a super rare and hard to get creature here. Of course, not forgetting the Hells of Fire. You can find these in the dark at night time, all the way to the north, quite a large area. So if you want Shadow Beak, you're going to have to go ahead and breed a Kitson with an Astagum. So Kitsuns you'll find pretty much only in one area, and that's around the Snow Mountain in the north. Maybe a few caves. And then Astagon is a overworld boss creature, or as a lucky drop that you might get in the northeast sanctuary. Now remember, the ones that spawn there, they've only got a small chance of spawning at different times of the day, so you may have to take multiple trips back and forth to hopefully find the one that you want. He does spawn at day at night time, or you will find him pretty much in the lava zone, just about in the middle right here. This is a powerful overworld mini boss you'll find in the mine shaft. So yes, you are going to definitely need some tough, maybe high level creatures to take it on. So Shadow Beak is a dark pal. It'll help you enhance your dark attack abilities when you're riding. In terms of other usefulness, he's not that great. Only gathering of one and a work speed of 35. So really not one you want to be using, but I guess that's the point. And yes, you can go ahead and ride him once you've crafted the saddle. If you want to get a Ice Reptero without breeding the ones that you find, you actually find these usually in the north cold area sometimes in the caves. Well, obviously you're going to need a Reptero. These can be found all in the lava zone. And you'll need a Foxicle, which can only be found again in the small mountain here in the north zone. And as you might expect, instead of fire, he's now ice. Level 3 cooling as well. If you want a Lilene, you're going to have to blend a Petalia and a Masanda. Talios can be found all the way to the South Sanctuary, and Masunders are slightly just to the north. And what you'll get is a Lulene, which again you can only usually find either as a boss overworld fight, or all the way over to the North East Sanctuary. If you want the Lulene knocked, again there is a boss overworld fight that you can find, it's in the cave in the north, just in this mountain range by the lake here in the middle. So you're going to need a Lulene, obviously, and you're going to need a Menesting, which is basically a Scorpion Overworld boss, again in the mineshaft in the southern part of the desert in the northeast. Not going to lie, it's the only one I haven't got because twice now I've killed it and it hasn't been the right gender to match up with the Lulene's I've already got. So if you want to flare this, you have to go all the way up to the Sanctuary to the northeast or get a Anubis and a Van Rim. So Anubis you'll find usually in caves. And Van Rim are actually to the west, and if you keep going even further west, 
we find them all in a lava zone. So Phalaris has got a kindling of three and transport in a three, and again, you've got a chance to find him in the northeast. If you want a Suzaku Aqua, you're going to have to mix a Yamantide with a Suzuku. So they're obviously all found in a desert environment, not too hard. Yamantides actually don't always show up correctly on the map, but it is a overworld spawn. You should find one in this lake right in the centre here. I do believe there is another one just around here. Again, like the Frost Lion and the Astagon creature, very powerful overworld boss fights, although this one is a bit easier than the other two. And obviously you get free water instead of fire for the Aqua version. So to get a Blaze Hell knocked, you need a Blaze Hell. Find these guys all the way over to the west and you need a Fell Bat. Now I do believe I might have actually bought one of these or maybe it raided me. I'm guessing it is in a cave or it is a field boss. Otherwise, if you want to get a Blaze Hell knocked, Actually, at night time, they are all over that lava zone much more than you find the blaze hells during the day. And obviously, they get the additional bonus of dark. If you're using the blaze hell, grass powers are going to drop more items when defeated, whereas neutral powers will drop more items when defeated when using this guy. They can both be ridden, and there you go. If you do want a Grizzbolt, you're going to have to mix up a Masanda and a Rayhound. So the Rayhound can be found in the northern deserts, and the Masanda just to the north as well. There is a small chance you can find Grizzbolts on the Southern Sanctuary. And he is one of the boss fights that you'll come across. So there we go. That's all 28 Fusion Pails that you can only get in terms of breeding by that method. So if you want more Frost Lions, you can go ahead and just breed two Frost Lions together. And you're always guaranteed to get one. Just like this Jomantide Ignis, breed two of these and you always get a baby Jomantide Ignis. And that's the same for Paladus, Necromus and Jet Dragon. You will have to capture or find a way to get and beat them and then go ahead and breed them together if you want more of the same. As said, I've got lots more guides in coming. I'm probably going to do a locations video of a lot of these creatures. So make sure you're tuned in. Go and check out the rest of the videos and a big shout out to Sean P for that. I will leave the link to that Reddit page to so go check out the breeding stat calculator yourself. Until next time, Ratbags, laters.